This is part 32 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating a feature module in Angular. Let's understand this with an example. This is our root application module, app module. The first thing that we want to do here is organize these import statements a bit. First, we want our Angular module imports. We have that already here. Followed by that, we want to include the import statements that import our own modules. At the moment, we only have one user-defined module and that is the app routing module which contains all our application routes. So let's move this import statement after we import all the Angular modules. And we have an extra slash here, we don't need that. So let's get rid of that. And then followed by this, let's include the import statements for our services. At the moment, within our application, we only have one service and that is our employee service. And then finally, let's import all the Angular components. Now notice, at the moment, all our application components, directives, pipes and services are in this one module. As we add more features to this application, this module is going to get more complex and extremely difficult to maintain. What we want to do now is move all the employee feature related components, directives, pipes and services into a separate feature module. Let's name this new feature module, employee module. We're going to use Angular CLI to generate our new feature module, employee module. Here's the command for that. ng for Angular CLI itself, g for generate, m for module. The name of our module is employee module and we want this employee module to be generated in this employee folder. We already have the employee folder. So we want this new module, employee module, to be generated in that existing folder. So let's prefix the name of the folder, which in our case is employee. Since we want this new module to be generated flat in that existing employee folder, let's also use the flat option. Once this employee module is created, we want to import this feature module into our root application module. And to specify that, we're going to use the module option and then specify the name of the module into which we want to import. We want to import this employee feature module into our root application module, app module. There we go. Our new module, employee module is created and our root module is also updated to import it. So if we take a look at our project, Notice within the employee folder, we have a new file, employee.module.ts, and this file contains our new feature module, employee module. And the root module is also updated to import our new feature module, employee module. Let's actually move this import statement next to this line. So we have all our user module imports at one place. And the imports array is also updated to include our new feature module, employee module. Now what we want to do is move all the employee feature related components, directives, pipes and services into our new feature module, employee module. At the moment, we have these two components, create employee component and list employees component. So let's move these two import statements into our new feature module. We also have to include them in the declarations array. Now notice there's a red squiggly under the file paths here. That's because these file paths are incorrect. Both the module file and the components are in the same folder employee. So there is no need to prefix the folder name. If you remember our create employee component uses reactive forms module directives. So if we take a look at the view template of our create employee component, notice this form group directive, it belongs to reactive forms module. Now for our employee module to work properly, reactive forms module need to be available for this module. One way to do that is by importing reactive forms module into this employee module. Another way is by creating a shared module and then re-exporting reactive forms module from that shared module. So any module like our employee module that imports the shared module will have the reactive forms module available. We'll discuss creating shared module in our upcoming videos. For now, let's see what's going to happen if we run this project without making the reactive forms module 
available to our employee module. We need to do one more change within our root module, app module. Since we have already moved create employee component and list employees component to our employee module, let's delete them from the declarations array. Let's save all our changes and take a quick look at the browser. Notice the web page doesn't display anything and we have an error in the browser console. Can't bind to form group since it isn't a known property of form. We have this error because the form group directive belongs to reactive forms module and this reactive forms module is not available for our feature module employee module. At the moment we are importing reactive forms module in our root application module app module but we know none of these components uses the reactive forms module directives so we don't need to import it in our root module we actually need it in our feature module employee module so let's move the import statement into the feature module we also need to include this reactive forms module in the import array notice now we do not have any errors in the browser console and our application works as expected. Now notice within our new feature module, employee module, we also have imported ng module. It is required here because for this class to be an Angular module, we need to decorate it with at ng module decorator. Notice we are also importing common module. Why is this common module required here? Well, most of the Angular basic directives and pipes like ngf, ng4, decimal pipe, etc. are available in this common module. So for these two components, create employee component and list employees component, to be able to use those common directives and pipes, we need common module. Now let's comment this line which imports common module and see what's going to happen. Notice the page doesn't display anything and we have errors in the browser console. Can't bind to ng class, can't bind to ngf. So all these basic directives are available in this common module. Let's uncomment this. Notice now the errors are gone and the application works as before. At this point, you might be wondering when these two components, create employee component, and list employees component, when these two components are in our root module, app module, the application was working just fine. We did not explicitly import common module. So how are the common directives like ngf and ng4 are available to these two components when they were in the root module? Now notice in the root module we are not importing common module but we are importing browser module. Now if you're wondering why is browser module required, well it is required for providing the essential services to launch and run a browser application. Browser module should be imported only in the root module and that too only once. And the interesting point to keep in mind is this browser module imports and re-exports common module. So all the common directives provided by the common module are available for the components within the root module. Whereas in a feature module like employee module, since we have already imported browser module in the root module, we cannot again do that in the feature module. So for the common directives to be available in the feature module, then we import common module into the feature module. A better way would have been to import this common module into a shared module and then re-export it from the shared module. So all the feature modules that import the shared module will have these common directives available. We'll discuss how to do that in our upcoming videos when we discuss creating a shared module. Now with the refactoring we have done, both these components, create employee component and list employees component, now belong to this feature module, employee module. Let's try to use this create employee component within our home component and see what happens. Now if we take a look at the component class for this create employee component, the selector is app-create-employee. Now let's use this selector within our home component. And remember, home component is present within our root module. So just above the image, let's try to use the selector. Notice we have an error app create employee is not a known element. 
This is because by default components, directives and pipes that belong to a module are available only within that module. So for example, create employee component and list employees component belong to this employee module. By default, they are available only within this module. Now if you want to make these components available to other modules that import this employee module, then we will have to re-export these components. In our case, we want to make available this create employee component to the root module which imports this employee module. So let's include exports array and then include create employee component within that. Notice now we do not see any errors and when we navigate to the home route we see create employee component displayed and below that we have the employees image. Now since we are exporting create employee component from this employee module this component is available to all modules that import this employee module. Now on our home route we do not want to display this create employee component. I included it to demonstrate the export functionality. So let's delete it from the view template of our home component. Now just like how we can export our own components, we can also re-export imported Angular modules. At the moment within our employee module, we are importing reactive forms module. Now if you want the directives of this reactive forms module available to all the modules that import this employee module, then all we need to do is export this by including it as part of this exports array. Now in our case this employee module is imported by root module and we know none of the components in the root module uses the directives provided by this reactive forms module. So there is really no need to export it and similarly our root module doesn't need this create employee component. So let's delete this entire exports array. Now if we take a look at our root module, notice our employee service which belongs to the employee feature is still here. With the services it works just fine because when a service is provided at a module level, the service is registered with the root injector and it's available to all the components across all modules in our entire application. But a better approach would be to move this employee service to either our employee feature module or to a separate core services module. We'll discuss moving this employee service in our upcoming videos. Now let's take a look at this app routing module. We created it in one of our previous videos in this series. Notice we have all our application routes including the employee feature related routes like listing employees, creating employees and editing employees. Within this app routing module we only want the application level routes like the home route, empty path route and the wildcard route. The employee feature related routes that is list create and edit we want them to be present in a separate routing module. We'll discuss moving these routes to a separate routing module in our upcoming videos. So with all the refactoring that we have done so far, our employee feature module looks like this and our root application module, app module looks like this. Now I have to warn you, both these modules are going to change slightly when we implement other modules like shared module, core module, feature routing module in our upcoming videos. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.